Good evening. My name is Saul Jimenez Sandoval, and I'm the president of Fresno State. Over 300,000 alumni call Fresno State their alma mater. These proud Bulldogs have succeeded in the fields of healthcare, business, agriculture, engineering, education, the arts, and more. Most of our alumni come from the Central Valley, but their impact is boundless. They have undoubtedly pushed our region, nation, and world forward in ways that only top-notch alumni can. Tonight, we celebrate the Top Dog Alumni Awards. Top dogs are those who inspire. They're esteemed individuals who are committed to service and making an impact on society. They are all leaders, advocates, and change makers. They have the proud spirit of a Fresno State Bulldog. My name is Don Cameron, and I graduated from Fresno State in 1975 with a degree in biology. My name is Cheryl Vines. I graduated from Fresno State in 1976 with a degree in therapeutic recreation from the College of Health and Human Services. I am Timothy Jones. I graduated in 1981 with a bachelor's degree from the Craig School of Business. I'm Scott Barnes and I earned a BA and MA in physical education from Fresno State. My name is Minnie Santion and I graduated with a criminology degree from the College of Social Sciences. My name is Rohan Fernando. I graduated from Fresno State in 1978 with a degree in agriculture from the Jordan College of Agricultural Sciences and Technology. My name is Ed Dunkel Jr. I graduated in 2001 with a degree in civil engineering from the Lyles College of Engineering. My name is Marcy Masumoto. I graduated in 2006 with a doctorate in educational leadership from the Kremen School of Education and Human Development. My name is John Flores, and I received my master's from Fresno State. My name is Jim Ardais. I graduated in 1970 from the College of Arts and Humanities with a degree in English. My name is John Gomes, and I graduated with a bachelor's degree and an MBA from the Craig School of Business at Fresno State. My name is Dr. Danielle Campaign. I graduated in 2000 with a degree in biology from the College of Science and Mathematics. To our students who are watching tonight, know that you too have what it takes to be a top dog. Earning your degree is just the beginning. Harness your potential and assume your role as a leader within our community. Write your own success story and make an impact, just like this year's top dogs. To our top dogs, Thank you for embodying the true spirit of a Fresno State Bulldog. Thank you for your tireless commitment to community. You are a shining example for our students to follow. And now, I invite you to enjoy this uninterrupted special presentation of Fresno State's 2023 Top Dog Alumni Awards. When I was young, I lived in Northern California in Redding. Always seemed like I was outdoors. I always had a large vegetable garden, and I think that gave me the interest to, to and really opened the door to get into farming. Something I, kind of in the back of my mind, always wanted to do. My major at Fresno State was biology. It gave me the tools needed and the skills needed to really get where I am today. I had absolutely no background in farming, but I knew I wanted to be outdoors long term. I didn't want to be in an office all day. I worked at the University of California Extension office in Fresno as an ag trainee when I got out of school, and that progressed into a life in farming. I was hired in 1981 at Terranova Ranch to be a vineyard manager. And by 1987, I was asked to be the general manager and vice president and have gone on at that position since then. When I first was hired to work at Terranova, we grew three crops, alfalfa, grain, and cotton. Crops that you could survive at, but you really couldn't move forward with. You really couldn't expand. I took a real look at where we were and where we should be and made a conscious decision to change the direction of the farm. We began bringing in some of the specialty crops that they were more intensive, they took more management skills. They were just something that other people didn't want to try. And believe me, we have tried an enormous number of crops here over the years. Some of them have proven to be very successful. 
I looked at things differently, I think, than people that have come from generational farms and knew that I could experiment a little more than, than I think they could and bring new techniques on farm and implement them and see if they worked. We're groundwater dependent here for our farming and we saw that the water table was continuing to drop about a foot, foot and a half per year. And I realized that we couldn't continue to farm long term unless we did something to change that. We studied it for about 30 years of ways that we could bring flood water on farm and actually begin to recharge the aquifer. In 2011, we were in the field on a December night and the fellow that I worked with on the grant said, look, we have more water, we need to put it somewhere. And I said, we'll put it on the wine grapes. His first reaction was, you're gonna kill them. And I said, no, we're not gonna kill them. We can put water on there. We can move water into the aquifer with the growing grapes. When I was young, I used to be around the creeks a lot. They all had wild grapes growing in them. The roots were in the water almost constantly. So I know they're tolerant. So we started the first Agmar program on farm groundwater recharge. I mean, we had one vineyard that we put 13 feet of water on and we know we increased the water table by 40 feet underneath that vineyard. We worked with the Department of Water Resources and the governor has actually made groundwater recharge a part of the water resiliency portfolio for the state. It's not the only answer, but it's one of the answers. I really love what I do. You know, it's just been a really rewarding career. Being able to produce food for other people, it's real satisfaction. We have a big responsibility as a farmer, but you know, the challenges that I've faced in farming have really been a blessing for me. Starting probably in the third or fourth grade, I became a Girl Scout, and that's probably the place where I first had my experiences with people living with disabilities, because my Girl Scout troop adopted a troop of young girls who lived with developmental disabilities. So that was one of the pivotal experiences in my life that sort of put me on a trajectory for the service that I've enjoyed for all these years. My mother had gone to Fresno State, so it was an important place to me. I went there to be a physical therapist. It didn't exactly work out, and I ended up in recreation therapy, but that offered me lots of different opportunities, and I think that's probably what I was supposed to be. One of the things that I learned most at Fresno State was about what we today call diversity, equity, and inclusion. It was just an opportunity to meet different people, see different cultures, as well as just expanding my knowledge in so many areas. And that really spilled over when I started working with people with disabilities. And I've worked really hard in my life to make sure that everybody gets treated the same. While I was at Fresno State, and then later on, as part of my career, I was very involved in wheelchair sports, wheelchair basketball particularly. I was at a wheelchair basketball tournament and met this man who um, was very nice and helped me out in a difficult situation. And three months later, we got married and I moved to Little Rock, Arkansas. There were very few opportunities for recreation therapists there. So I went to work as a case manager for the Arkansas Spinal Cord Commission. When I got to Arkansas, there was no primary seatbelt law. We fought long and hard with lots of strong legislators and lots of disability advocates to make that happen. Another of my really exciting experiences was working to pass the Americans with Disabilities Act. The Civil Rights Act didn't include people with disabilities. So this was the Civil Rights Act 30 years later that provided people with disabilities with basic needs. It turned out that the chairman of the Small Business Committee in the Senate was run by an Arkansan who we knew well because his daughter had had a spinal cord tumor when she was young. And so I talked him into at least giving a hearing for the ADA. So it was a small hurdle, but it was one of the first hurdles that it had to get through. So to stand on the lawn at the White House and watch President Bush sign the Americans with Disabilities Act is probably one of the most exciting things that's happened to me in my career. 
I left working at the Arkansas Spinal Cord Commission. I took a very early retirement, primarily because I'd lost my husband and I was ready to move back to California. But I always felt like, you know, maybe I hadn't given enough. So now I'm the Director of Research and Education at Paralyzed Veterans of America. I don't know if I'll step out of working in recreation therapy and working with the National Wheelchair Basketball Association anytime soon, but my big goal now is to train people to do the things that I do and to make sure that there's someone who will carry on the work that I've done. I love the fact that I can have impact on people in very small ways. I left Fresno State thinking that I would do big things. And instead, I've done a lot of little things that have made big things happen. I was born in Fresno. My mother and father were instrumental in our education because they were not college educated themselves. It was important to them that we were put through school and could get the best education because they believed that if we had an education, it would give us the best opportunity to be successful in life. My experience at Fresno State certainly prepared me for law school and practicing law and being a part of this community. I think a lot of times we think we go to school to learn, and I think most of the time what it teaches us is to learn how to learn. I can credit the Craig School of Business with directing my law school career and ultimately my legal practice into commercial litigation because it was through those classes and through the uh, legal emphasis portion of my degree uh, that I learned that it was my passion and it was what I uh, was meant to do. I sort of had this desire to build something that lived beyond my life. As a lawyer, you can go into a law firm practicing on your own when you're no longer practicing. You know, your nameplate, so to speak, is gone. And that's what inspired me to want to create and build a firm. An opportunity came along where I could potentially create a real estate development company. And I did in 2007. A number of people in the community, especially in the real estate business, either developers or uh, real estate brokers, commented that the, the talk in the town is uh, that you can't just go to a haberdashery, a hat shop, and trade in your attorney hat for a developer hat. You know, it struck me at the time, uh, but it didn't, you know, motivate me beyond uh, what I was already motivated to do. If I take on a task, I'm going to give it all I have, and, and, you know, that's what I did. Riverstone is a master plan community designed on approximately 2,000 acres. There's about 6,578 homes that will ultimately be built there. It'll have three clubhouses. One is constructed called the Lodge. It'll have two to three elementary schools. Ultimately, adjacent to it will be a high school and an intermediate school as those needs arise. And we wanted it to be authentic. We wanted it to be unique. We wanted it to be walkable and remarkable. It's very rewarding to know that you can create a place that, that is so well received and creates happiness. Growing up, you know, the fourth child in five kids and with accomplished siblings, I would tell myself that as I grew up and what I did in life, I would do my best to be somebody. And I don't say that in an egotistical way at all because I don't know whether I'm there now or not. But what I can tell you is that's what I told myself and that's what I live my life by. Working the way I had to work to get through school and with jobs, every morning I'd have to wake up and look in the mirror and tell myself I was okay, I could do this because it wasn't easy. Since 1953, nearly 400 top dogs have been honored by the Fresno State Alumni Association. These alumni have succeeded in a variety of disciplines. They're astronauts, politicians, award-winning actors, poets, NFL athletes, U.S. Olympians, entrepreneurs, and innovators. Tonight, we're hearing the latest Bulldog alumni success stories. As your Fresno State Alumni Association Board President, I offer my sincerest congratulations to this year's Top Dogs. You've made your alma mater proud. Thank you to our Top Dog presenting sponsors, Fresno State's Office of the President and Precision Civil Engineering Incorporated.
growing up, my dad was a civil engineer, so we moved a lot between eastern Washington region and northern California. Early on, played uh, baseball, football, basketball, was turned on to all of that. And as I grew up, it got a little taller and uh, had more interest in basketball. What really inspired me was a guy who's a friend to this day that believed in me from the get-go, that saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. One day I was just working on my game and he came into the gym and he said, you know, what I see in you, if you want to take this to college and beyond, you have a chance to if you work hard enough at it. And that was an inspiration to me to grab onto basketball, to really make it my passion. One of the special things that really attracted me to go to Fresno State was just knowing the reputation of the fan base. As a player, you come from a Division II school to Division I, one of the best fan bases in the country. And I'll never forget the first time entering Selen Arena in what we call the Human Tunnel, which was all the fans that were allowed to come down to the court side and create a human tunnel around the entire court. Certainly the red wave is and was phenomenal, but the people made the red wave, and I'll never forget the people. My passion for college athletics comes from personal experience and what I gained from that. I would not be sitting in this chair today without those experiences. There's nothing better than to watch a young freshman who doesn't even know how to get to the library leave here with a great job offer and confidence equipped for the rest of their lives. That's what gets me excited every single day. When I think about Research Stadium and see uh, what's happening, back in 2005, the east side of the stadium was totally redone, and the west side was sort of left alone 50 years from having any major renovations and the deferred maintenance, so an obvious need. But the challenge was, how do you fix it? And we were all about the fan experience, and believe me, the west side needed help. From implosion, and I got to press a button on that, to rebuilding the west side, which will be done in the summer of 23 coming up, I think we have one of the most fan-friendly, relevant stadiums. I say relevant because not only is it going to be an incredible fan experience, but this year-round use, in this case, a student health center as well as a welcome center for recruiting general student body is, I believe, like no other college stadium in America. It really is exciting and inspiring to think about the impact it will have on future generations. There's nothing more gratifying than succeeding at the things that you thought were priorities and you knew were priorities. And so, well, that whole process from putting a team together to creating a plan and executing is something that I take pride in, that we've been very good at, and we've done it really every school I've been at. When I think about how Fresno State has impacted my life, I think back to, hey, a young college kid that was trying to find his way, and I grew up at Fresno State. Everything I have today is attributed to having great parents, for sure, but my experience at Fresno State in helping mold me for whatever came next. And if you get that right, you get everything right, and Fresno State got that right. I was born in Tequila, Mexico. My family migrated here when I was just a little bit over a year, and I was raised in Five Points, California. My parents were happy to be here, to have an opportunity to put food on the table and to have their children educated and find a pathway out of the difficult work that they did as farm workers. I initially wanted to go to Boulder, Colorado or UC San Diego. At the same time, I had the responsibility of translating for my father, who was very ill at the time. He was going through kidney dialysis. And so his doctor told me that my father would not see me graduate from college. And so that day I knew that I was going to stay close because I wanted to be by my dad and that I would be going to Fresno State. 
as I was immersing myself in the first year at Fresno State, I realized that you could go to college 50 miles away, 500 miles away, or 5,000 miles away. If you immerse yourself in that community, you really can get a unique college experience. And so I feel fortunate in the sense that I decided to rush a sorority, find you, and it really showed me a lot of things in a different way. Having been a young daughter of farm workers, being exposed to a traditional sorority was quite the experience, not only mixing in a different social class of students, but also teaching them a little bit about my culture. Coming to Fresno State, staying local kept me local for a long time, long enough to value where I come from, to love my community, and to want to improve it. I'm a chief of staff at the state capitol. I've been there for 14 years. 14 years ago, I also started my own political consulting business with a business partner. I've had a passion for being able to lift and participate in part of the Latina community in the state of California for a long time now. My path was very difficult um, to Sacramento, uh, both as a woman, as a person of color, and it continues to be. You'd be amazed how many times I've been in a meeting with a lot of powerful men, and I'm the only woman, and I'm the only person of color. I'm one of few Latina political consultants in the state of California, and that's not a good thing, right? While I was growing up professionally, a lot of times people wanted to put me in a box and say, oh, you're the Central Valley girl, or you're a moderate. And a lot of times I was dissuaded from going a certain route, or uh, I was told, you're too young to be a chief of staff, or you don't have enough experience. And so a lot of times when people told me no, it empowered me more. And I thought, well, I came to Sacramento to be the girl on everything, you know, not put myself in a box. And so leadership is not being the first. Leadership is cracking that glass ceiling and then looking behind you and seeing who you're gonna lift with you. And because that has been important to me for two decades, I volunteered with numerous organizations Organization, sitting on panels or mentoring young people to try and inspire them. Uh, because I always say, if I made it this far, you can make it leaps and bounds beyond. Where I grew up helped me become who I was and have a better understanding of my community. And staying local and going to Fresno State is by far the best decision I ever made. I grew up in Sri Lanka. My mother's family had land, so my parents encouraged us to go and get a degree in agriculture. So we went to a junior college, and my parents and the professors there wanted me to continue my education. They encouraged me to continue my education. And one of the professors who taught at the junior college and a, a former student, they had come to Fresno State to get their bachelor's. So it was a natural path for me to come to Fresno State. I had no interest in mathematics. I was going to study animal science. It was all biology, far away from mathematics. I took a class in agricultural economics. The professor teaching the class, Dr. Carl Ferson, he gave us a homework that required doing lots of repetitive calculations. So I thought maybe I can use my programmable calculator to do those calculations. And I was able to do it, and I was very proud of myself. And I took the calculator and went to see Dr. Ferson. And he said, Rohan, I will give you a new equation to put into your computer, into your calculator, and let's see it, it, uh, whether it can get the answer. And before the calculator was able to get the answer, he told me what the correct answer was. So I said, how did you do that? And so he introduced me to the concept of the derivative, which I had never heard about. That was a real eye-opening experience for me. And I inquired to see whether there is an area in animal science, which I was specializing in, that required mathematics. And I found that animal genetics, you need mathematics to tease out the difference between the genetic potential of an animal and the environmental contributions to, to production. So I decided that I was going to study animal genetics. That's how I ended up becoming a professor. So Fresno State, my education here changed uh, my whole career in a way completely unexpected to me. My career has been in research and teaching in the quantitative genetics area. 
One of the main problems that we have to deal with is to predict the genetic potential of animals. For the longest time, we couldn't observe the genes. The only way we could make a prediction was by measuring something like milk production of a cow and then predict the genetic potential. But during the early part of my career, the genome was sequenced and DNA information started becoming available. And one of my early papers was on how to incorporate that molecular information into the genetic prediction machinery that was used for national genetic evaluations. And that paper has been cited hundreds of times. And the national beef cattle evaluation, other than Angus, employs the methodology that I have developed with my colleagues and it's being used for the beef cattle genetic evaluation throughout uh, the U.S. and in many other countries and I'm very proud of that accomplishment. I feel very fortunate that I found a career that I really enjoyed doing. It was not like work for me, it was like play and I have retired and I'm still doing the thing that I love to do. Often my friends and relatives ask me, Rohan, you spend a lot of time working, do you get paid? And I said, no, I, I don't. I got paid for a long time for doing what I love to do, and now I'm retired. I'm, I don't get paid, but I still love doing it. I was born as part of a fifth generation family here in Fresno County, which very proud of. I had a beautiful childhood until about the age of 10, my mom and dad were divorced. And growing up, my dad is an engineer and watching him and seeing him, I wanted to emulate him. And so from early stages, I knew what I wanted to do. I always had a passion for Fresno State. I love Fresno State. And high school was so easy. You could read the book the night before the test and then you're fine. Whereas you go to engineering at Fresno State, it's, it's a little bit different. You don't try that, it doesn't work. So I learned some lessons that way, but I did enjoy it considerably. And it took me a while to get through. I ended up getting a really good job and slowed down, which I would not recommend it. But the good part of that was I started learning the, the business, learning the profession. And when you go back to school, um, and I think this is one of the very important things for the School of Engineering is to get that practical knowledge. Because when you get the practical knowledge and you go back, you see how everything works together. One of the great things Fresno State does is the internships that they, they provide or allow students learn the practical side of the, of the industry. So when they graduate um, and a firm hires them, they have that background and they can kind of hit the ground running. And most of our Employees here started off as interns with us and, and they've grown and stayed here. It's another very rewarding thing to see the growth of students. I think I knew from day one I wanted to be a business owner. Since the beginning of Precision Civil Engineering, we've grown and diversified in what we offer. We've tried to become a turnkey type operation, so when we started we were strictly civil engineering and land surveying, but now we offer planning and landscape architecture as well as construction management. One of our biggest projects is Riverstone. That's a 2,000 acre development. And our goal there was to try to keep the integrity of the land. It has rolling hills and things of that nature. And I think we did a wonderful job of that. When you go out there, it's not just a straight flat cut. We always say we build from the ground down. So all the things you don't see, we're very important with because we're doing all the infrastructure. So all your sewer, water, storm drain. It's so important to have a good engineering design so things don't flood. So what we do is very important. A lot of people don't see that or even understand what happens. They just see a building and there it is. But to see the transformation, the difference we made and all the hard work, that's incredibly rewarding. When you own a business, you're not only caring for yourself, you're caring for a lot of people. And you have a responsibility and I look at it as family and you see their eyes and you have to work hard to take care of your family. So with the Great Recession of 2008, it was an incredibly difficult time for us. Overnight, we had businesses that went bankrupt on us. And at the same time, the, the valve shut off for, for new work. So we're stuck and we had to survive. And if it wasn't for the help of many friends and family and other associates, we might not made it, but I will not give up. I will never give up. And that's part of the things I learned. And that's why we are here. I just think it's so important to, to give back. And especially with my background and, and understanding how other people have done that for me, um, I am going to pay it forward, and I want to make a difference in people's lives. Thank you to our top dog visionary sponsors, American Ambulance, 
the Division of Continuing and Global Education at Fresno State, Learn for Life High Schools, and Media Solutions Incorporated. Growing up in a rural community, I was very active in the 4-H youth program, which made explicit efforts to provide outreach to youth of color, leaders of color. I had grown up in the school on the poor side of town where the farm worker kids uh, went, and they were my friends. And I felt, of course, they should have the same opportunities that I had. And I, I learned um, as a teenager that not everybody believes that, and even people you love didn't believe that. It was very disturbing for me, as well as created a passion uh, for me to uh, strive to promote equity for all. And that's what drives me as I work in education as well. I went to a master's program in community development at UC Davis, and I met my future husband, who is from the Fresno area, and I ended up moving here. And while in the Fresno area, I have worked uh, professionally in many different sectors, overlapping health education with community education and, and the K-12 uh, sector. Through my career, I started thinking again about the idea of doctorate. When I was working at UCSF Fresno, having always kept doctors on a pedestal, I realized, you know, they're just like you and me. And the light bulb finally went on in my head to say, you know what, maybe I could apply for the doctorate in educational leadership at Fresno State. While I was in the doctoral program, one of my professors, Dr. Walt Buster, says, how would you like to work with me at Fresno State in the Educational Leadership Institute. And it was a beautiful opportunity that started a 10-year career at Fresno State, developing programs to provide support to principals and superintendents in 40 small school districts up and down our valley, all of whom were able to enhance the educational opportunities and the achievement of their students. That also reinforced my understanding of what was happening in K-12 schools in the region, and I felt it was timely. It was time for me to step up uh, in a public service manner and run for school board. So I served on the board in Sanger Unified uh, for six years, and then I'm just entering my second term on the Fresno County Board of Education. It's a labor of love through public service as well as having worked professionally in education, all resulting from the experience and exposure at Fresno State. I would hope that in the future, all of our kids, all of our young adults, all of our adults could have choice in what type of school setting is best for them, what type of opportunities they're looking for, regardless of where they live, regardless of what they look like, regardless of what their family life is like, and I have committed both my career as well as my public service to ensuring that all students, all students, every single student has the same opportunities as other students. That is what's really important to me. Childhood was being part of a migrant fight worker family. We traveled up and down the San Joaquin Valley, Oregon, Idaho, Washington. The days were long. Uh, the winters were cold. The summers were hot. I remember that I had read in the paper or somewhere that Truman made $125,000 a year as president of the United States. Well, we made 75 cents an hour back in those days. I would have to work 80 plus years save every penny to make what Truman made in one year. So I said, I gotta find a better way of making a life because working at 75 cents an hour ain't gonna cut it. I really never had anybody that I grew up with that I can say as a childhood friend. And of course, then when I went on to college, it was a different story. One person asked me one day, uh, would you like to come by and look at our fraternity? And I had nothing else to do, so I went and uh, became Sigma Chi. That opened a whole new world for me and the camaraderie and friendship has lasted now for 60 plus years. 
I went and pursued my MBA in management. I became certainly a real estate broker, a business consultant, author. My education has been an important part of my success that I've had financially in this world. There were some darn good professors at Fresno State that really taught me how to plan, how to think, research, how to seek out. And uh, I owe to them a lot of my success because of what they taught me and how I built on what they taught me to make a better life for me and my family. Growing up, if somebody didn't have gas for their vehicle, then we'd give them gas. Or if somebody didn't have food, we'd share with them. So sharing became part of the culture that I grew up in. I got involved with an organization called Community Service Organization. It was an organization that Cesar Chavez had uh, started back in the 50s. They had elections and I got elected president of the local chapter. Um, then a few months later, I moved on and became executive director of CSO. And CSO was challenged uh, with organizing, motivating, and implementing a game plan that people could better themselves. We set up some homes in Selma and Mendota and along Highway 99. We uh, set up a credit union and a food bank that we had in Calma, Biola. Biola has a gas line now. Hey, I want to help others. I, I, I live to help others. And so it was a perfect setting for me as a, an executive director. I think uh, giving back should be expected all of us. I had an idea to raise money for the undergraduates at Fresno State Sigma Chi chapter. I already raised $100,000 by selling 400 bricks that are in the patio of the Sigma Chi house. But we needed more because so many students that we met sometimes have two and three jobs just to make ends meet. So I set up an endowment. There's a saying that says, uh, you will always be remembered until forgotten. I want to be remembered. I don't want to be forgotten. And certainly an endowment will live on forever. Even though I'm dust and I've gone into another world, some people will benefit. And they might never know who I am, but they'll know that a guy by the name of John Flores was a Sigma Chi at Epsilon Eta Chapter back a long time ago. And thanks to him, I don't have to work that extra job. What I'm most proud of is in my professional life is the fact that I helped many, many people have a better life for themselves and their families. That because of me, Fresno is a better place. And that uh, other places that I've been are a better place because of my being there and doing something. I was raised in Fresno by a single mom. I ended up choosing to go to Fresno State and, you know, honestly, I can say this, it was the best decision for me that I ever made. I was surrounded by people that were like me. So Fresno State, in many respects, was kind of like a warm bath. It wasn't like when I went to law school, which was more like a cold shower. I always say that if you want to find the biggest collection of dysfunctional people in any community, go to a law school. I remember after everybody talked about where they went to school, they asked me where I went to school, and I said, I went to Fresno State. And I remember one of them said, uh, I think he went to Harvard or something. He said, they have a school there. Then after we got our midterm grades, that's when I said, yeah, I went to Fresno State. Um, how'd you do? Fresno State really set me on the course that stood me in good stead. I mean, the skills that I used as a lawyer, the skills I used as a judge, the skills that I use now as a writer, all of these things are generated by what I did when I was 19 years old, 20 years old. Of course, I didn't think about it that way then. I was a uh, felony trial lawyer fairly well in advance of the normal track. I ended up running for office and became a municipal court judge. And in 1985, Governor Duke Majan appointed me to the Superior Court. And from there, I went to the Fifth District Court of Appeal. I believe that government has a primary responsibility of creating a safe place for its constituents. In 1990-91, crime was just rampant. Here in the community of Fresno, um, a young woman was murdered. She was the daughter of a, of a nurse and a wedding photographer here, Mike Reynolds. My mother was friends with the Reynoldses and uh, asked me to 
become involved. I, I really was not enthused about becoming involved, but my mother was insistent, and so I agreed to speak to them. And Mike asked me, if you could do one thing, what is it that you would do uh, to reduce crime in California? So I wrote up the structure of what at that time became known as the Three Strikes Law. It was controversial, no question about it. You know, I look at it in terms of people who are alive today that have no concept that they're alive because of three strikes. I mean, at the time, 10 years later, I calculated it was like 10,000 people. I looked at that as a very positive, um, salutary thing, and I still do. When I became the administrative presiding justice, I realized that the Court of Appeal needed to create its own building. I came up with a design that used glass walls to the courtroom. I want you to be able to look through the glass windows and see the center seat of the highest court in Central California. And over the transom, I want it to say, equal justice under law. As a judge, you are entrusted with a degree of discretion and responsibility that frankly, very few human beings have. You have the power to take away a person's children, a person's home, a person's freedom, a person's life. I regard that as a great public trust. I was a judge for 30 years. I had the privilege of serving at every level of the judiciary, including the Supreme Court. It was the greatest honor that you could possibly have. The Arthur Sastrom Service Award is an opportunity for the Alumni Association on behalf of the university to acknowledge, recognize, reward, long-term service, volunteerism, advocacy, contributions that an individual or a duo maybe have made to our university overall over a longer period of time. I'm so thrilled that John is the recipient of the 2023 Arthur Safstrom Award. He ticks every box on the criteria list, and I can't imagine anyone more deserving than him. I was born in a small town on the west side, Gustine. There were seven in my family, and we learned, you know, the, the notion of working hard very young. I was very interested in business. I was also interested in computers at the time. And then when I got here to Fresno State is when I just kind of jumped in with both feet in terms of the college experience and joined a business fraternity and gave me an opportunity to meet with businesses in the community and program that they called Half Day in the Job, where they had various community businesses that would allow students from the fraternity to come on site and learn about their business. And I had the great fortune of linking up with the local financial institution, Guarantee Savings, and that was the door that opened for me in terms of a career. While I was there at Guarantee is really where I first got involved with Fresno State. They encouraged volunteerism and specifically giving back to community. And um, my mentor encouraged me to help him with a membership drive that Fresno State Alumni Association was having. And so one of the very first things I did was um, buy a life membership. It was the opportunity that Fresno State afforded me to be connected to the community and really good people in the community, real strong leaders that understood not only the business aspects of what they were doing, but also the responsibility to give back to the community and to the university. I met John Gomes 23 years ago when I joined the Alumni Association Board. John had started his volunteer career at Fresno State with his school, Craig School of Business, and had been a longtime advocate for them, fundraiser, was on their advisory committees and such, and then he had come over to the Alumni Board. John has been a person on the alumni board that when there was a need to have an alumni representative on some type of university committee, the first capital campaign, the Renaissance Task Force, the graduation 2025 initiative for the CSU. So he's somebody that his colleagues in service have a lot of confidence in. There's a lot of trust in having John represent us. And I think he has done a lot of work to try to bring others into the alumni fold and get others to serve. And so it's not just about 
him and what he can do on his own, but he's a team builder and, uh, and people want to be on his team. As I think about all the things that we've done over the years, it's the scholarship program that I think really stands out as the thing that I'm most proud of because we in fact are making a difference in students' lives. And I would have loved to have had the opportunity to have that kind of a scholarship when I was in college. But knowing that we can do it now it just is, is very rewarding. Today, our scholarship endowment is about six and a half million dollars. We give away about $250,000 a year and growing. And when you start to think about those dollars and who they go to and what it means to those students to be able to be helped with their educational expenses and what that contribution means to this community as a result of educated students able to make a contribution to the community. It's just mind-boggling, and so I, I think that's probably the single best thing that I've done as a member of the Fresno State Alumni Association. John is someone who doesn't look for recognition. He looks at the end goal of what do we need to achieve, what can he contribute to making sure you as a group achieve that, and puts his head down and does the work. He's the person you want on your side if you're gonna go into battle over something and you're both in agreement on what the results should be. Uh, but he's also somebody who will defend fiercely the things he believes. And I think that's what makes him someone we all love and admire as his colleagues in the volunteer world. If I can do one thing today that will make this a better place than it was when I got here, that's good. That's good for me, that's good for everybody. It's that kind of a mindset that I've always followed in my career, any board that I have served on, anything that I, I do, so that when we get to the end of the day, we can all go home and smile, right? When exemplary individuals' accomplishments have earned them the highest top dog honor, the Distinguished Alumni Award. Dr. Danielle Campaign grew up in Sanger and knew she wanted to be a physician from a young age. An involved student, she graduated from Fresno State in 2000 with a bachelor's degree in biology before pursuing medical school. Dr. Campaign has made a name for herself at Community Regional Medical Center, the only level one trauma center between Los Angeles and Sacramento. In addition to her duties as Interim Chief of Emergency Medicine at UCSF Fresno, Dr. Campaign serves as Medical Director of American Ambulance in Fresno. She volunteers for numerous local organizations, supports Fresno State students, and is passionate about delivering the highest quality care to those around her. I'm honored to introduce the 2023 Distinguished Alumni Award recipient, Dr. Daniel Campaign. Growing up on a farm, a bunch of us kids, you know, it's kind of a neat um, environment to grow up, but it also is one of the reasons why I wanted to become a physician. My grandfather, you know, he was a farmer and he got involved in an accident and was taken to Reedley Hospital and there was no doctor on duty. As a kid hearing that story, knowing I didn't get a chance to meet my grandfather, it's very powerful because like if the doctor had been there, maybe he'd still be here today. Danielle has always loved science. She has always loved animals. When we were little, we'd get dropped off um, from the bus and she would walk to the sheep farm next door. That was her after school job. And then I was such a good helper, they let me like lance boils and give shots and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so I kind of knew I wanted to go into science from such a young age. When it came to applying for colleges, you know, I knew I wanted to go to medical school. And Fresno State had an honors college, and that was a wonderful experience. So getting that award really, I think, was a huge pivot point in my life and got me to go to Fresno State. Danielle is a perfectionist. She does not know how to fail. Her entire life, she does not know how to fail. <laughs> So I'm a straight A student through high school. I'm a super nerd, you know, I love science. My first semester at Fresno State, I got a C, my first non-A of my whole life. And it was the end of the world. How am I gonna go to medical school? How am I gonna do this? I remember meeting with the pre-med advisor and they're like, well, do you wanna change your major? Do you wanna do something else? No, you know, there's nothing else I wanna do. Like, this is what I wanna do. And one thing about Danielle is she will find a way. And so she did everything she could um, to make up for that grade. 
I went on and went to medical school at University of Southern California in Los Angeles. You know, I'm sitting there getting interviewed, right? And you have people from Princeton, Yale, Harvard, right? Everybody's sitting there going, how do you know that? It's like, well, I know that from my anatomy class with Dr. Grubbs at Fresno State. I know that from my immunology class at Fresno State. And so I think the ability to be taught by PhD professors in small classes, I don't think you realize the value of that, that you have this professor who's an expert in that teaching you. And so I think it really set me up into a wonderful career in medicine. I did not love it in Los Angeles. I love the schooling, but Fresno is where I want to come home to. So I applied for a residency here at UCSF Fresno. And the EM program here is one of the oldest ones in the country. And so it's very well established. And so it was a big honor to get into this residency. Then I stayed on as faculty here at UCSF Fresno. She had opportunities. She could have gone elsewhere. She wanted Fresno. Emergency medicine was her number one choice, her number one goal. We all dream of falling into that profession that it's not a job to us because we love it so much. She has accomplished that dream. It is her love. It does not work for her. And so I think it's all fallen into place. Day to day, my role changes kind of based on the hats that I'm wearing. So one of the biggest hats is, you know, I'm a professor of emergency medicine. The other hat I wear is I'm interim chief of the emergency department here at UCSF Fresno and Community Regional Medical Center, supervising and overseeing and financial budgets for 50 faculty physicians and a residency program and kind of keeping that healthy and moving. And the other hat I wear is I'm medical director for American Ambulance. We have a running joke in our family that if there are 15 free minutes of her time, she's going to fill it with something. And while she is climbing that success ladder, she's got like one hand going up on the ladder, but her other hand, she's pulling people up with her. She's always trying to help those who are in her footsteps, trying to, to follow that path to medicine. The Valley needs more people involved in healthcare in all areas of medicine. And so I think exposing our youth to those programs. I knew I wanted to be a doctor when I was in second grade, so getting those second and third graders to know like, hey, I can do that, I wanna be there. Even if it's working in IT and healthcare or it's working at the bedside, um, there is a place for them. So part of my role now as interim chief of the emergency medicine department is fostering pipeline programs. We have an academic research associates program where at Fresno State you enroll patients in research and you're in the emergency department with us. And I feel like those kind of programs and Gaining more of those is really important to me because I want to make sure that people who live in Fresno and go to Fresno State have the ability to get involved in healthcare. And it actually fulfills me. It makes me feel good to be able to give back since, you know, I was a young buck learning at one point too and somebody took the time to mentor me and to teach me. I feel like we need to be there for each other to help get through these milestones in life. So it kind of fulfills both of my passions, right? You get to be a doctor taking care of patients and giving back to the community that raised you, and then also teaching the next generation of physicians and making an impact that way. Danielle's the total package. I'm lucky to call her my sister, my best friend, to have someone like her always in my corner. I feel very fortunate to have her in my life. And I am so thankful that she has earned this award so that others can see how deserving and amazing she really is. When I got that phone call, I was very shocked. I kind of feel not worthy because I feel like there's more to do and more to give. And it's actually a huge honor that my sister nominated me. Having your own family member think that highly of you is really neat. It means a lot to me. Did I nominate her because she's a great doctor? No, that's not why. I nominated her because of her impact on this community and not only what she does for the hospital, but what she does for everybody else. She has a true calling to make this community better, and that's what she does day in and day out. As a student at Fresno State, I'm inspired by the stories of the top dogs we heard from tonight. These alumni are part of an esteemed group of 300,000 alumni worldwide who show just how powerful a Fresno State degree really is. I am more excited than ever to earn my degree in nursing. I look forward to walking across the stage at graduation with my peers as a proud Bulldog alumna. If you or someone you know is ready to join the Bulldog family, visit gotofresnostate.com. Fresno State offers undergraduate and graduate degrees in a variety of disciplines, and the majority of our students receive financial aid. Remember, graduating from Fresno State is just the beginning of your very own success story. Thank you and go dogs. I think if there was any advice that I would give students at Fresno State now, it would be to use every opportunity that you come upon to learn something new. And just because it's not in the area that you think you want to study 
or it's not in the area of, that you know about, take the leap and learn something new. It could change your life. Everything that you have as an ability is a gift. And you take that and you do the best you can with it. And that's the gift you give back. You don't need to be a rich person to be a happy person. Uh, you don't need to be famous to be happy. You need to be a person who, at the end of the day, feels like you did the best you could. And if you can do that, you're going to be just fine. College athletics is such a privilege to play. And when you have the opportunity to play, there's so many life lessons that you learn and carry with you. Being at Fresno State, uh, working through adversity, figuring out how to play at that level, having some injuries that I had to overcome, things like discipline, stick to itness, uh, overcoming adversity, a team, communication, all those things uh, are, are still in, in my back pocket. One of the things that students may not realize is that we professors had to struggle to understand the concepts that may come off as very easy when we are teaching. I often tell them how I failed in mathematics in high school and not to be afraid to struggle and to bang your head at, <laughs> at a problem in trying to understand it. And because people who have to struggle to understand something learn it better, I think, than people who get it like that. The valley is rich in what it produces, from the crops we grow to the people and the skills that they contribute to our world. And I would just hope that people in our valley continue to believe in themselves and believe that this is a worthy place. Fresno State's a shining star. I, I know how important it is to this valley, to this city. And I think we have a we have a bright, bright future. If we can all come together and help and work together to make this succeed more than it is even now, um, it's, it's only gonna help this area. Find your passion. Going to school is a place to try to discover yourself and take the time to figure out what you wanna do. Educate yourself to the best of your ability to do that. And be prepared to put in a lot of energy both in school and after you graduate um, to make it come true. I love traveling the world because I'm constantly reminded how insignificant I am. And that's humbling and humbling is good. Go see the world. You gotta keep opening those doors, not taking no for an answer and defining yourself by your own standards. Your word, your integrity is number one. No matter what you do in life, no matter where you go, what you do and how you act with people follows you forever. If I had not come to Fresno State, I am absolutely sure I would not be in the position that I am in with my company today. Specifically, the learning experience that you get at a CSU and at Fresno State, that's really about not just reading a book, but rather getting your hands dirty, learning from what works, learning from what doesn't work, and then taking that to the real world. And when you do those kinds of things, your career will take off. Go be a bulldog. It's amazing. It'll set you up to a pathway. Um, one is affordable, great education. And a lot of people take for granted what's in your backyard. You know, you're here, you're growing up next to it, you drive by it on Shaw all the time. But it's an amazing university. And I don't feel like I would have been as successful if I'd gone anywhere else. You know, I've had people that are stopping on the street over the years that uh, tap me and say, uh, Mr. Flory, so yes, I'm so and so. Uh, you don't know who I am, but I just want to say thank you. You gave me the help with the training that I turned into a business and been very successful. So, had it not been for you, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. So, but those are things that when people say that to you, you say, wow, I did make an impact somewhere. Thank you.